Hello and welcome to another CF Power Scripts tutorial with me, Christian Rauchenwald. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the conversion tracking add-on Power Script, the cornerstone element for all our tracking Power Scripts. As always, in order to get started, you will need to log into your CF Power Scripts account. And once there, head from the dashboard to the Power Scripts section. Now, just like many other power scripts, the conversion tracking add-on is something that you want to add to a funnel specifically. So the funnel in which you plan to set up your conversion tracking for Google, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. Now, in my case, I'm gonna pick my demo funnel here. And as you can see, I already have a bunch of other power scripts in place here, like for example, the Facebook conversion tracking, which like this would not do anything without the conversion tracking add-on. So in order to add the conversion tracking add-on, as always, we're gonna click on add new, look for conversion tracking add-on, just click on it. And the only thing you have to set here is your currency, which in my case would be US dollars and click on add script. So we now added the conversion tracking add-on once to the entire funnel, which is necessary so the script actually can properly track when people buy something on your order forms or on your OTO pages. However, that's not all there is to it. We also need to provide additional information. And for that, we'll have to add the conversion tracking add-on separately to each of the order form and up or down sell funnel steps. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to add the script to your order forms and to your up and down sell funnel steps. Since however, the setup for the down and for the up sell funnel steps is identical, I'm just gonna cover one of those two in the video itself. Now to get started, we are going to click on the order form funnel step. And here again, we see that there are a couple of scripts in place which are irrelevant for the purpose of this video. So we'll just move on and press add new. Again, look for the conversion tracking add-on. And here for the order form specifically, we also have to provide the product information for each product that we have set up on the funnel step. In order to do that, we have to go to click funnels and there go to the funnel and to the order form funnel step and then to the product step there. Now, as you can see, I have a total of eight products set up here. However, for the purpose of keeping this video short, I'm gonna just show you how it works with the first product because the process is then the same for all other products. So if we look back at CF Power Scripts, we see that we need the product ID, a name, product type, price, and a lifetime value factor. To get started, we can go back to ClickFunnels and simply right click the edit button for the product and copy the link address to basically get the product ID. However, you could also click on edit for the product and copy the product ID from the URL itself. If you take a look at the URL, it will say app.clickfunnels.com, funnel steps, followed by the funnel step ID, product, followed by the product ID. But as said, the faster way is to just copy the URL from the button, go to CF Power Scripts and paste the URL into the product ID field, and then click in the name field and it will extract the product ID automatically. Now, whichever value we input into the name field would be used, for example, with Google e-commerce tracking. So it would show up or it would track that name or show that name in your Google Analytics dashboard if you also set up Google e-commerce tracking. And for Facebook tracking, the name field or the product name that you enter here will be reported as an additional parameter. So you would have, for example, the purchase event, and then it would also contain product name with whichever name you enter here, which in turn you could then use to set up, for example, custom conversions within Facebook. Now, I'm not gonna dive into Facebook and into custom conversions. If you want to learn more about that, I recommend you check out the tutorial about the Facebook Pixel Power Script, because there I'm explaining that in more detail. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna call my product here Stripe One Time Purchase, and which brings us to the next field, and that is the product type. Now the product type is a setting that at the time of recording this video is only relevant for Facebook conversion tracking because Facebook doesn't only have a conversion event, you actually have a purchase event, so for regular one-time purchases, a subscribe event for subscriptions, and a start trial event for subscriptions with a free trial period, for example. And depending on what you select here, it will trigger a different event. So if we select one-time purchase here, whichever price we configure in the next field would be reported as a purchase event. If we select subscription, it would use the price here and report it as a subscribe event. And additionally, it would also consider the so-called lifetime value factor, which I explain later in the video in more detail. 
For your payment plan products, it would also trigger it as a subscribe event because a payment plan means you receive some money now, which is what we would trigger right now and that would be the value in the price column and you receive or you expect to receive further payments so free, six, 12 installments for example, which is again where the lifetime value factor would come into play with the payment plan product type and the subscribe event that's triggered there for Facebook. Now, last but not least, the trial event would be tracked or triggered as a start trial event on Facebook, which again would report whichever value you enter here initially and then consider the predicted or estimated lifetime value factor to tell Facebook how much money you're expecting to make from that customer over time. So how many months you expect, for example, the user to stay with you. And if your business is already running for some time, you actually should have quite accurate numbers. Now for other platforms as mentioned at the time of recording this video it doesn't really matter what you select here it will just report the price that you enter in the price column but for Facebook it can actually make a huge difference because well for example you might have a $10 subscription but users on average stay 12 months and you might have a $50 one-time purchase. Now, if you just track both of them as a purchase event, then Facebook would actually consider that the $50 one-time purchase or the people that buy that specific product are a better audience and more valuable. However, if you trigger the subscribe event for $10 with a lifetime value factor of 12, you would tell Facebook, we just made $10, but we expected to make $120. And therefore Facebook would know that the subscriber for $10 is actually more valuable to your business because you are expecting to make on average $120 in total. So setting up your products the way they actually are, so setting up one-time purchases as one-time purchases, subscription and subscriptions and so on, actually makes sense, especially for Facebook tracking, to provide Facebook with more and accurate information to basically create better lookalike audiences in the long run and increase the revenue that you make from your Facebook ads. Now in this case, this is a one-time purchase, so I'm just gonna select one-time purchase, and this one is actually for $97. So that's all there is, and since it's a one-time purchase, the lifetime value factor setting is irrelevant, so we can just enter one here. You could, however, also enter zero or any other value into this field when you select a one-time purchase, because the value would be ignored in this case, because it's a one-time purchase, there is no extended or estimated lifetime value tied to that purchase. Now, as mentioned, for all your other products, which I'm not gonna do in this video to keep it short, you will just do the same thing. So you click on add product, you go copy the product ID, you enter the name, and then you define the product type, the price, and the lifetime value factor. Also, as mentioned, the lifetime value factor is especially relevant for Facebook tracking at the time of recording this video and dictates how much more money you're expecting to make. So as I said, if you would have a subscription for $10 and you, on average, no users cancel after 12 payments, you would enter 12 here and we would track it in a way that we say you just made $10 right now or whichever other currency you entered, but you're expecting to make 12 times that amount of money. If on the other hand, you for example, offer a payment plan with three installments, let's say also for $10 per installment, then after some time you would know that not all your customers pay all three installments, but on average, they pay 2.9 installments or a certain percentage of users only pays one or two installments and only another percentage of users pays all three. So this way you would again be able to provide Facebook precisely with the expected lifetime value that you stand to make for each $10 purchase instead of just reporting the $10. Now I said for the purpose of recording this video, I'm gonna finish this here with that one product on the order form. So I'm gonna remove that. But again, you have to add all your products, including your order bump products here as well for them to be tracked properly. Now the last thing you have to do is click on add script. And with that, you would then have the conversion tracking add-on set up on your order form. And the last thing left to do is to deal with your OTO up and down sell funnel steps. So for that, I'm gonna go back to the funnel and there go to my upsell funnel step page. And here again, just gonna click on add new, look for the conversion tracking add-on, make sure the currency is selected, click on add product, and go back to ClickFunnels, go to my upsell funnel step here, go to the products tab. Here I only have one product set up, so I can just right click again, copy the link address. It's a one-time purchase for $397. So I'm go here, paste the URL to extract the product ID, one-time purchase $397 which again means the lifetime value factor is irrelevant and we can just enter one here and the name of this product is I'm gonna check real quick stripe one-time purchase so in this case we're gonna say stripe 
although I'm gonna add upsell here and one time purchase and click on add script. Now, if however on your upsell or downsell funnel step, you have multiple products, you also should add all the product information in the conversion tracking add-on. And with that, we're almost done. The last thing we'll need to do is we're gonna click on edit here and copy the product ID of the product that we have here. And then next to the funnel step pages here, click on the shortcut and open the page in the ClickFunnels page editor. If you're running a split test, you will see two pages within CF Power Scripts and you will have to perform the change for both of your pages. Because on your up and down sell funnel steps, the button alone doesn't provide the product information that we need for the tracking. So what you will have to do is in the page editor, look for your yes button. So, so every button or text link that actually triggers the transaction for your up or down sell funnel step product. And there for the button, go to settings, go to get CSS info. And just like it is set up here, change the title to product minus ID minus the product ID of the product that this button will purchase for the user. Click on update and that's it. Now, if you have a longer upsell or downsell funnel step page with multiple buttons and links, you will have to do that for each of the buttons and text links. If you're offering multiple products so the user might be able to pick between product A, B or C, then you also have to do that for all the buttons, but always make sure that you use the right product ID. And the last thing left to do is save the changes here. So once you've updated all the buttons. Now, if we go back to CF Power Scripts and we go back to the funnel, now I would still need to, first of all, do the same thing for my downsell funnel step. So also add the conversion tracking add-on with all the product information, edit the funnel step and change the CSS title of all the buttons on that funnel step. And last but not least, because I didn't complete it, actually add the rest of the product information for my order form funnel step but you should already get the idea. So to summarize it, in order for any of our conversion tracking power scripts to work, so no matter if you're setting up Facebook conversion tracking, Google conversion tracking, Twitter conversion tracking, or any of the other conversion tracking scripts that we are offering, you have to first add the conversion tracking power script to the entire funnel once, ideally without the product information, so you have everything better structured. And then additionally, go to the order form funnel step and all up or down sell funnel steps and add the conversion tracking add-on power script there as well with the product information of all the products that the user can buy on that specific funnel step. And last but not least, for your up and down sell funnel steps, you'll have to edit the page within ClickFunnels and adjust the CSS title of all buttons and text links that will trigger a transaction so that will actually buy one of the products for the user. And that's pretty much it. With that, you would have the conversion tracking add-on in place, which as mentioned in turn will be used for all conversion tracking scripts that we currently offer, which means if you now would want to set up Facebook conversion tracking, you would need to look into the Facebook pixel power script and the Facebook conversion tracking power script, plus optionally the Facebook conversions API power script to set up complete Facebook tracking. If you then wanna set up, for example, Google e-commerce tracking, you would need to add the Google Analytics power script and then the Google Analytics e-com tracking power script and so on. So for whichever platform you want to set up tracking, first of all, it needs the conversion tracking add-on. And second of all, you need to look into the basic integration. So the basic pixel or tag integration for the platform and then followed by the e-commerce tracking script integration. Now, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to use the support button within your CF Power Scripts account that's visible in the bottom right corner on every page to simply reach out to us and we are more than happy to answer your questions. With that, I'm gonna say thanks for watching this tutorial and even more so thanks for using CF Power Scripts. See you in one of our other tutorials. Till then, bye-bye.